so much. I left it blank for a long time in my own notes. And it actually comes more from the video that we'll watch than anything else. Because if I would have named it what I felt like I should name it just from the scripture, then that would have given you too much of a clue. I didn't want to be that, that easy. I didn't want to make it that easy. Okay? Now, if you want to turn in your Bibles, we will have the scripture on the screen. But please turn in your Bibles, pull it up on your phone, whatever your fancy is. Okay? Uh, we'll be reading from the uh, New Living Translation. The NLT is well be on the board, but it'll all make sense. We're going to cover that a little bit later. Um, it's in 1 John, the third chapter. 1 John, the third chapter. Um, in uh, verses 11 through 20 is where we will kind of camp out. Okay? We'll cover a little bit before and after, but that's where we'll be. 1 John 3, 11 through 20. Um, today is a little different approach. Um, as I mentioned already with the video being in the middle of the service, um, because sometimes I think we just need to be shaken up a little bit, you know, stirred up a little bit, and if I can do that for you, you're welcome. You're welcome, <laughs> right? Uh, last week, or last couple of weeks, we talked about our eyes and then our vision. Um, some of you thought that, you know, those were, those were pretty intense. I, I hope so. I'm, I'm glad that they were. Were they memorable? Well, you tell me. You tell me. Um, so today... We're going to just uh, get to some text. We're going to hit this right off the bat. Um, not a lot of setup to, to that part of it. Um, first of all, we're going to talk about who John is. I know I've covered this before, but hey, we always have new faces and we always need to learn. Um, John was obviously one of the disciples. He wrote the book of John. Now he's writing these books later in life, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. Um, he will be there. Uh, he was there when Jesus was on the cross. He was the disciple that Jesus told to that take Mary as your mother, and this is your son. Okay, that John, same John. Um, he basically lived to be the oldest disciple. The other ones were all persecuted before John. John wrote these books very late in his life. Um, a lot of theologians will, will, will believe that John thought that Jesus was going to return during his lifetime, and as he got older... He felt that, well, I need to write this down. And for proof of that, just read the beginning of 1 John. Okay? The very beginning of 1 John will tell you a lot about that. Okay? Um, and he talks about um, many, many fascinating things. So please, please study John. Basically, this is in the, what they think is in 50 to 60 years after the resurrection. So it's been a while. Okay? John's had some life. And um, his theme is that, that God the Father loves us, that he calls us his children. Now think about that. John, a disciple of Jesus, whom we all know the disciples have given up on Jesus, okay? They have thought, okay, well, it's all over now, right? Until the resurrection, they had all given up. That John, who saw the resurrected Jesus, is now writing to people after the fact and he says, I know God the Father, and I know Jesus, and you are his children. Think, I mean, just think about that. I think sometimes we just we call each other brother and sister. We just, think about that. You're God's child. Amen. I mean, come on. If we don't think about that a little bit. He tells us, now, this isn't always easy on you. I'm going to tell you that right now. Mm -hmm. He tells you and he tells me to stay pure. Why? Because Jesus was pure. And he stops. Because why would he have to explain that to you? Why would he have to explain that to me? He says, anyone who continues to live in him, anyone who continues to live in Christ will not sin. <coughs> Whoops, we don't talk about that all the time, do we? Well, I'm not done. Well, because he's not done. This is just the setup. Anyone, anyone who keeps on sinning does not know him. Or they don't even understand who he is. I mean, this is John, the disciple, who says, you know, guys, if you take that stuff lightly and you just keep doing it, you know what? You don't, you don't know him. I knew him. I walked with him. And you, and you just don't know him. That's what he says. That's, that's not what I say. It is what I say now because of what he said. 
Those born into God's family, his children, do not make a practice of sinning because God's life is in them. That's what he said. God's life is in them. Now, what that literally meant, what he literally wrote in the Greek was, God's seed is in them. That's what the original meant. Now, that's a whole other sermon. We don't have time for that. Okay? So he's saying if you keep on, and these are his words, if you keep on sinning, that you belong to the devil. Hmm, I don't like that. This is John. <coughs> But then he says this in verse 10. So, because of all of that, now we can tell who are the children of God and who are children of the devil. We can tell. This is what John said. Anyone who does not live righteously, now don't get hung up on that word, okay? Don't say, I can't live righteously. Living righteously just means that you live to the best of your ability in, in, in accordance with God. You pursue God. You, you are in, heading in the right direction towards God. Are you headed in the right direction towards God? Anyone who does that and does not love other believers does not belong to God. Those, those, are, those are his words. Anyone who does not live righteously, so if you refuse to go in the direction of God and you don't love other believers, you don't belong to God. Hmm. John. If you take it a little easier on me, this is John who walked with Jesus, John. Who very likely had Mary living with him for years after the resurrection and after the crucifixion. He had Jesus' mother with him for years. It says that. Now, on the heels of that, we're going to watch a video. There is a little setup to the video. How many of you watch America's Got Talent? Y'all watch America's Got Talent? A lot of you. Okay, this is Britain's Got Talent. So there's a little bit of setup. We had to play the first part of it, but we'll stop it when the song is over. Jack, please. Excited and obviously slightly nervous. Nothing oh. to be nervous about. And tell me who you are, please. We are the Missing People Choir, and that's made up of a number of people who have children and other loved ones who have been missing. In my case, my son's been missing since 1988. What? Oh, God, how do you know that? When my son Lee went missing, he was 15. He would now be 41. I just want to find him, but I know that we're not the only ones going through this. We're all in this together, and we can all stand by each other. My son Quentin went missing when he was 18, just walked away from the family home one afternoon after school and was never seen again. My son Charles went missing when he was 20 years old. He was backpacking 27 years ago. There isn't a minute when your mind is free from the pain and heartache. Having the support of each other makes us stronger. Sitting here together makes us stronger. And singing together makes us super strong. It's inspirational. It's good for the soul. To get a big audience like this is such a fabulous opportunity to get our message across. <laughs> Hopefully, some of the youngsters who have gone missing, the, the photographs will be shown on the screen behind us and maybe, and maybe somebody will come forward and tell us what's happened to them. It only takes one person to recognise the face. We all have to live in hope. If, if there's no hope, what, what would we have to live for? There'd be nothing. We all have a common goal to find our missing loved ones and bring them home where they belong. Somewhere only we know. 
Are you all in the in, in the same boat here? That all all of the choir members are in a similar place. Quite a few of the choir got missing family. Other members of the choir are either workers with the charity yeah. or supporters of the charity. What a brilliant idea! Good luck. As great and as lovely as that video is, and I absolutely love it, we as believers are supposed to set the standard for loving each other. We are supposed to set the standard. We are commanded, not politely asked, we are commanded to love each other. When they ended that song, the last words were, I miss you. Do we share that for our fellow believers who aren't here? I'm asking you the same question that God asked me when I watched that video. Because a week ago, I wasn't playing that video. A week ago, I had never seen that video. He said, Todd, do you care that much about people who, who aren't here? I'm not talking about the lost. We, we can cover that on another sermon. John was talking about loving each other. Believers. Getting along. Teammates. Loving each other. 
if the world can come together and sing a song about people that they miss. Don't you think we can overlook some things? For his family. For your family. And don't take my word for it. Let's read it. And this is the message you have heard from the beginning. This is still John writing. <coughs> We should love one another. I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't complicate it. I mean, he says, come on. We must not be like Cain, who belonged to the evil one and killed his brother. Why Cain killed him? Because Cain had been doing what was evil, and his brother had been doing what was righteous. Very simple, John says. So don't be surprised, dear brothers and sisters. Now, in the original, this just said brothers, but that was just the time. I'm just sharing that in case your Bible has a little note that says that. He goes on to say, if the world hates you, if the world hates you, if things outside of your brothers and sisters, if, if co-workers, if bosses, if, I'm sorry, some family members hate you, he goes on to say, if we love our brothers and sisters who are believers, it proves that we have passed from death to life. But a person who has no love is still dead. We're supposed to pass from death to life, but if we have no love, we're still dead, John says. Anyone who hates another or brother or sister is really a murderer at heart, and you know that murderers don't have eternal life within them. But you see what he just, I mean, he just said, you and I, we think of a murderer as, you know, someone who just takes a life, right? We know what murderers are. We see where they go. We see what happens to them. John just says, if you hate your brother or sister, you're really a murderer in your heart. You're really a murderer in your heart. We know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. So we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. He just keeps spelling it out. He goes on from there. If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need but shows no compassion... How can God's love be in that person? He says, come on. I mean, if you can help somebody and you don't, if you, if you see a brother or sister, now do you see that part? I mean, you and I, we think about helping everybody, and there's really nothing wrong with that. But do, do you see how he keeps singling out believers? Mm -hmm. This is John. Mm -hmm. Believers, if you see another believer that is in need and you don't help them, how can you have love in you? Dear children, it's not merely that we say we love each other. Let's show the truth by our actions. Don't just let it come out of your mouth. Don't just say, oh, sure, I do. But actually show it because our actions will show that we belong to the truth. So we will be confident when we stand before God. Are we going to be confident when we stand before God? I mean, I mean, honestly, I think that's hard for me to imagine. I can't imagine me being confident. I can imagine me going, I hope I got it right. But John is saying that if we do that, if we belong to the truth, we will be confident. Even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings, and he knows everything. Amen. And he goes on. Thank you, Lord. No, sorry, Jack, that's before that. That is 20. I'm sorry, that's my fault. So even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings. The two words that became my title were the two words that they sang over and over again in that song, calling and searching. Are we calling and are we searching? The gentleman that was first interviewed there said that he lost his son when, he was, when his son was 15 years old and that his son would now be 41. 15 when he lost him and 41 now and that man stood on that stage and said we are all in this together and we can stand by each other can we say that as believers can we say that one of the ladies said having the support of each other makes us stronger <laughs> I mean seriously I talked about it with the kids. What team do you want to be on? Do you want to be on a team that loves each other and is stronger? 
How does the world see us as believers? How do they see us? Because I know that it's an excuse for some people to not come to church because of that. I get that. We're not perfect. I understand that. None of us were created that way. We, we're not perfect. But do we love more? Do we act different? Do we show something that the world doesn't? Because those people on that screen were singing to a world, what is our song? What's yours and what's mine? I had a, a true story to share from Billy Graham's ministry, but, but there's not time. I'll share it in the future, I guarantee you. But I do have this true story today. I wonder about this theme in our lives, because this is very, very real to all of us. It was an actress, so I won't tell you who it was. She had recently gone through a divorce. She was alone for the first time in many years in her life. She had a particular scene in this show where she had to kiss an actor. And she says that as after she did, when she was alone, she cried and she cried. Because she hadn't been kissed or held by a man in over eight months, and she didn't realize how much that meant to her until she had to do it for the show. The love that we need in our lives is incredible. Amen. It's not about our jobs. It's not. It's not about our jobs. It's not about the duties that we have. It's about the relationships that we have. And do we, do you and do I, do we love each other? Do we love each other? I'm, I'm asking because sometimes I don't know. I'm serious. Sometimes I don't know. And if we don't have it in here, then how in the world are we going to sell it out there? How are we going to show it out there? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I think he asks us this. Now, I'm going to post one more scripture today before we do. I went with the New King James Version on this one because the wording is a little different. Now, if you wonder about versions of the Bibles, we could have a long discussion about that. I won't do a lot today. But the New King James Version, the New American Standard Version, the English Standard Versions, they are called exact equivalency. Okay? Translations. They translate Scripture word by word. Okay? Every word is translated. Now, the NLT and the NIV and messages, they're called dynamic equivalency translations. What that means is they translate the idea, not the exact word for word. Sometimes it's word for word, but most of the time it's the idea. So you see the difference, word by word and the general idea. General ideas are usually easier to read because word by word can get a little, you know. This is the New King James Version. This is word by word of John, the fourth chapter, so just a little farther down, verses 7 and 8. Same theme, John writes it this way. Did you, do you know what's missing there in the first? It doesn't say brothers and sisters, does it? It doesn't say brothers and sisters. It says, beloved, that's you. If you're a believer, that's you. That's me. Beloved, let us love one another. For love, for love is of God. I love the way that sounds. That's why I like that. Love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God. What do you think about that? I mean, John, I'm wondering what you mean here. Well, let me tell you. He who does not know God, who does not love, does not know God. For God is... Love. Now, God's much more than that, obviously. But John is telling us that point blank. How do we choose to live our lives? Because if you sit here this morning as a believer in Jesus Christ and what he can do for you in your life, then we should celebrate love more. That's what John's telling us. Amen. 
we should make sure that we celebrate love more. Don't ever let it be lacking in your lives. If you're lost, if you were a believer, or you wondered about that lifestyle, but you don't understand it, you haven't really seen it practiced, I would ask that you stay and pray with our elders afterwards. Pray for some direction. Because as John said, you're either following evil or you're following God. You're either walking in the darkness or you're walking in light. There really is no gray area. We like, we like that gray area, but it isn't there. We're doing one or the other. And if anyone watches this morning or, or is a critic of, of my faith, of my fellow believers and our faith, I would just challenge you in this way. As believers, we mess it up a lot. We don't get it right all the time. But we have instructions on how we're supposed to live. So if you're a critic of my faith this morning, of our faith, if you could be God for a second and imagine how you would like the world to look, how would it look if everybody, if all the believers in you loved each other? How would that look? <laughs> to me, it would just be perfect. <coughs> That's why. That's why we serve the God that we do. He doesn't give us forever to choose. Because at some point in time, we have no second chances. So as we go through this life, are we calling? Are we searching? Are we loving? Because John, who walked with Jesus, who saw the resurrected Jesus, he told us that's what he wants. I said, enough said. Thank you, John. And thank you, Jesus. We can pray for you. Our God and our Father, we thank you for, for loving us enough to give us the instructions that we need to live in this life. There are many unlovely things, many unlovely things that have been done in this world and in this life. Lord, help us to know and help us to see the darkness that's around us, and to follow your light. Help us to see the fellow believers that need our love, that need our attention, that need some compassion. Lord, over and over and over again in your word, you have shared that we should take care of each other as believers. I ask your spirit to show us those that need love, and I ask for your spirit to calm us enough to receive love when it is offered. I thank you for the opportunity to share your words as we live and as we love in this life together. May we forever be changed and transformed by your ways in our life. For it is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen.